Well, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Thank you to Charlie for having asked me to uh, take the floor. It is the first time I deliver a presentation on this topic. I've had the honor of introducing the genius subject. Uh, we're in charge of communication, but I'd like to talk about uh, tips and uh, tricks, or rather stages and keys, but it's more tips and tricks ideas that, of things that I do in the clinic that I learned from my father to guarantee success of the treatment. So the topic of my uh, presentation will be how to optimize the treatment. The definition consists in uh, making the most out of each action, each appointment. When the patient comes to the clinic, you have to try to make the most, avoid parasitic effects, avoid emergencies, and everything should be programmed so that you can be efficient and reduce the number of appointments. Does this work? Okay. So these are the stages I'd like to introduce. First question that comes to mind, when to start the treatment, to make sure that the treatment will be short and efficient. There are moments when you should start treatment. Sometimes you should wait. What about bonding? and also the validation before you change uh, the archwire, the quality uh, assessment, the, the finishing, and the retainers. When to start? Now, the main principle that we apply in our clinic consists in uh, trying to wait for final teeth and uh, before you start the treatment to wait for the... Uh, final teeth uh, to erupt. This young patient, there is enough uh, room for 23 and 43 at the bottom. We want to start by using uh, springs on the sides, but the problem is that the uh, final teeth uh, will take too much time to erupt and the treatment will last forever. Three years, four years in treatment. When you reach the finishing stages, the patients are waiting for the brackets to be removed because you've been waiting for ages for the uh, cuspy to erupt. So again, you have to optimize the beginning of the treatment. So for this particular patient, we waited. I'm sorry, the pointer is not mine, so I don't know how to use it. So I waited for one year. When she came back one year later, I was happy because the 43 had erupted. It went rather well. All I needed was a room enough for the gasped on the other side. All I had to do was open up the space and the tooth would erupt. Here I'm bonding. Same, uh, similar case in this young patient. She still has a few milk teeth. He's 11 and a half years old. There is enough time. I'd rather wait and place all the brackets during the bonding appointment. So I saw the patient again six months later. All the deciduous teeth had uh, been shed, and I gave him an appointment to start the treatment. I don't want 15 appointments when one milk tooth has fallen off, uh, so I have to wait again, and I have to realign 45, which is already, because it, it erupted turn, whereas I was already using an 1825 night eye. I mean, I wasted time, and you, I had to use three uh, arch wires, and I had to go back, and there were bonding appointments that were useless, and you end up uh, billing an additional semester to the parents. I don't know if it's it's really going to be better for you and for the patient. If the teeth, if the milk teeth are still present, they must uh, shed uh, during the first six months of treatment after you have started the treatment. This young female patient is uh, me, you, and uh, her temporary uh, deciduous teeth are about to uh, Fall. The pointer doesn't work properly. Okay, I'll do, I'll do it with the keyboard. Thank you. This is a panic tray. 85 uh, is still lagging behind, the, the others will shed off uh, in very little time. We bond in July 2018. So this is the subject we wait for the milk teeth uh, to uh, fall off. I can show you some tips and tricks. We can discuss them later. 
Here, February 2019, six months later, I was able to bond 35 and 45. All the teeth bonded. I don't want to tell the patient uh, that I'm going to work forever. I tell her it's going to be in a year and a half, and I will deliver. This is the previous patient. If there is not enough for a tooth, then I start uh, the treatment at the time of eruption and not one year later, because otherwise I have to wait with a coil on an open space for the tooth to erupt and the tooth is not erupting. This is Rose, and here we're ready to start. We're happy, we're happy that we waited, and you see that the caspid is about to erupt. So I bonded here, we opened some space, November 16, 2016, and June of 2017. I don't have all the pictures, but this is the quality assessment. The teeth are equipped, and the, the tooth came out as soon as I opened up the space. Now, the next appointment for which you want to save time is the bonding appointment. The key is to bond as many teeth as possible, both arches during the same appointment, all the sevens, all the ectopic teeth, so you don't have to re-organize another bonding uh, appointment. It's going to be a waste of time. In this patient, we bonded everything. The caspids uh, do not have enough time, enough space to erupt. I protected with uh, something that Auriel showed me. It's called soft flow. It's a silicone gel that you can light cure, and it protects the uh, caspid hooks, you know, when the hooks uh, can be painful for the child's mouth. And it's also very useful when there is a wire that can injure the, uh, the cheek uh, behind the, uh, the molar. You can actually put some uh, flow on the hook or on the bracket, on the wire, and, uh, and the next uh, appointment you can uh, do something. It's like um, gum, so it's very easy to use, and it can save you in some emergency situations. It's very handy. I buy it from Ortho Partner, but you know, you can buy it anywhere. This is another situation. We tried to bond all the teeth. I left uh, 13 and 22 outside of the arch wire, but the brackets are bonded, so I don't have to organize another bonding appointment where you have to do the etching and you have to do the bonding. Obviously, you only bond the bracket if it can be used, if it can be bonded in the ideal position. If you have to bond it askew, it's useless. And also, if you have to do something for that uh, particular tooth, you can uh, bond a little ring or, or a little button. Otherwise, uh, if you don't want to do anything, you don't just put anything on the tooth and you have to organize another bonding appointment. But if you can avoid doing that, it's better. So wait for the patient to have all the uh, final dentition to start the treatment. This patient is called Gabriel. We were able to bond the cuspid. And I want to uh, show you 45. It's rotated. It doesn't happen very often, but here it's rotated, but I was able to place the bracket uh, properly. In this case, uh, I was in a hurry, and uh, we bonded uh, a little ring on the uh, caspid. Now, a detail that I'd like to highlight. When a tooth has not erupted, it's not easy to talk to you today because some of you are very experienced orthodontists, um, some of you aren't very experienced, so some things I say may be useful for some people, but not for everybody. The uh, O14 arch wire is very uh, flexible, so I recommend that you cut it distally from the premolars. Every time a tooth is not connected, don't bring it to the end because they will always come back to you telling you that the arch wire has been cut. You know, the uh, size of the space is sufficient, so careful. Avoid the emergencies, and if you don't, have, you don't have a bracket on every teeth, cool every tooth, cut the uh, arch wire and fold it back. Here we have the patient with the biturbos. 12 was not bonded because I could not position the bracket in a satisfactory way, so I wanted to open more space and then I can bond the bracket. Now this is uh, the main subject. Use uh, beveled. 
blocks. You can place them on the first maxillary premolars and you want to create a kind of concave slope to guide the uh, premolar, mandibular premolar into a class 1. Either the patient is in class 1 and you keep him in class 1, you freeze him in class 1 so that you don't have unwanted effects on the occlusion, or the patient is in class 2 and then you're going to guide the mandibular arch uh, and help it position itself in class 1. And for your night type wire sequence, the occlusion will change progressively before you move to the elastic stage. So that's what it looks like. If you uh, blow up the picture, you place the block on the first premolar. This is a patient in class 1, but I will show you a class 2 uh, later. This is a patient in class 1, so the beveled block will occupy the middle part of the premolar. It's concave in all directions. It, doesn't, it shouldn't be convex, it should be concave. The tooth must go in. If it can slip right or left, it doesn't work. It should really be brought back to the center of the tooth every time it slides. And the mesial crest, the, mar the marginal mesial crest of the premolar. I'll show you several examples. I don't know if you can see here. Does it work? Bear with me for a second. Okay. Sur la so photo on the right hand side of the it shows the slope on the maxillary premolar should be the equivalent of the slope, on, I'll show you with my finger. This area here, Cette zone -là, there is parallelism between the two slopes, the distal slope of your mandibular premolar and the mesial slope of the maxillary premolar. There must be a kind of um, hole between the two. Ici, ça est qui est this ça is fait Sarah. Ça we bonded her in December of 2021. That's the day of the bonding appointment with the little blocks. And uh, June of 2022, I have frozen the class one, so it's in place. It hasn't moved. And June of 2022 is when I start using the stainless, stainless steel wires and I can grind the blocks off and class one will remain. Will remain. Another example. Where you see the effect, the patient in the initial situation, the day I placed the, the brackets, uh, I have the diastema between 23 and 24. 24 has remained in class 1 behind 34. I use uh, beveled blocks. It's my favorite technique. It's the easiest one on a daily basis. But if uh, I have too much uh, deep bite, uh, I use a different device. Like in this patient, I've changed my method. I use composite structures now. And some patients have been able to wear out the uh, incisal edges at, on the bottom uh, teeth. So now I use white CVI. I uh, fill the mini mold for the bite turbos uh, with the uh, ultra bond lock, which is slightly different uh, from the ultra bond blue. And it works really well. Now the last option, either when there is a lot of uh, uh, an important deep bite uh, and overjet, overbite and overjet, and the bite turbos are difficult to place and to put in position, we can use this kind of device, uh, the Spanish uh, retroincisor plane, because my father got this idea from a group of Spanish orthodontists, so we call it the Spanish device. It's quite convenient. It's placed on top of the uh, orthodontic device. We have uh, loop hooks, mesial from 14 and 24, and you place the pallet part and you insert the arch wire in the little rings. I will show you the uh, previous picture so you understand. You see the little loops, and every time you change the arch wire, you remove the uh, device, and the child can wash, or the dentist can wash, uh, the child can wash below, but the child cannot remove the device during the treatment, not himself. 
It's quite convenient. Of course, the patients don't really like it because, uh, you know, it gives them a funny speech and it's very easy to eat, but it helps you uh, cure deep bites very easily. That was Theodore. So the initial situation and the situation Et one year later. Bonding took place in April, and here you see that the deep bite has been leveled thanks to this uh, Spanish device. Finally, you enfin, want to insert the uh, O14 archwire in a maximum number of si teeth. Possible, when that's not possible, you can use a coil. Nothing new under the sun. Incroyable. Here, the cuspid had Mais enough donc, space to erupt, so I inserted it on the O14 nighttime wire. The two maxillary cuspids maxillary don't have enough uh, space non, to come down on the arch, so I open up some space with a coil pour to uh, avoid a uh, en fait, root buckle uh, torque that would be too uh, si marked if I uh, bonded and uh, inserted the wire immediately in the, wire, in the uh, teeth. Now here the O18 can be inserted once you have corrected all the rotations with the O14. I never engaged the second molar in the O18. And the, the O14, sorry, and for an emergency, I can uh, engage uh, the second molar in the O18. I always do it. We can place the stops on the proximal side of the tooth on both sides, and we can also use active coils. I'd like to introduce choline. Choline is the case that we're going to uh, use to show the arch sequence. The number 13 is a bit high. We bonded in June 2018. 13 is not bonded because uh, it was not useful. We're opening space. All the other teeth are engaged. The sevens, 27 and 37 uh, are present. They've been bonded. And uh, the child has uh, these little uh, bite ramps, uh, beveled bite ramps or blocks, except that the slop uses the, uh, occupies the distal part of the tooth to push the mandibular premolar to about half the distance of one tooth. So if the brackets are disturbing the patient, you can uh, do the parallel. The beveled uh, bite ramp must be parallel to the buccal distal slope of your mandibular premolar. Same patient two months later, August of 2018, we placed the O18 arch wire. We continue opening up the space. Normally, the next stage should be all 14 or 25 night die, except that here we want to engage all the teeth present in the child's mouth. It's a phase during which we can use active uh, springs if we need more space to allow a tooth to erupt. And we start thinking about the stops. If it, there is a crowding, uh, we can keep them centered. If the uh, case is relatively well aligned, there, there is space, then you can start using stops distally uh, from the uh, cuspid. Because uh, otherwise, the rectangular arch wires were going to open up spaces that you will have to close afterwards. And the parents will blame you and say, hey, hey, you have made spaces that that did not exist. So starting uh, with 14.025 night eye, you can use stops distally from the cuspids to avoid opening up more spaces. For Colleen, I inserted the A14.025 night eye uh, on the bottom arch, but I kept my O18 here on the cuspid. I bonded the cuspid, I bonded the two uh, second premolars, the 17 and 47 had not been bonded. 14, uh, 25 uh, went through 47, and uh, that was not an issue. And I added some bite uh, ramps. Uh, I reinforced my beveled ramps. I had to add uh, one for 47, so I increased the slope of the beveled ramp. I don't know if you can see the uh, effect that the bite ramps had. 
On the left hand side, you see that the, the teeth are going on the, in the right position. Next appointment, we insert the 0-14-25 night eye at the upper arch. And the next appointment, you have to uh, insert the 18-25 night eye. So you have to have all your teeth present. Otherwise, you stick to the 14 25 and you activate the cause until the teeth erupt. You don't want to insert an 18-25 and then the tooth erupts and you have to move back to the 14-25, which you have thrown away. This is the stage when the teeth are supposed to be aligned. We are finally adjusting the torque and the arch expansion. You place the stops on the caspids to avoid opening spaces. And in some cases, when there is a bit of uh, open bite and too much space, you can start using uh, chains on the uh, if your uh, retroclination is. Uh, Marked. So here the uh, 1825 night eye are positioned on the upper and lower arch and the beveled uh, ramps are still working. Something we have uh, started doing a, f a while ago, the uh, quality assessment. At this stage I always tell the patient that the two right hand side picture, the mandibular arch and the maxillary arch uh, should be perfect. Normally the arch wires have done their job, all the teeth have erupted. So we want to control the alignment that we have achieved at the end of the night act sequence. Why start another arch wire if one of the teeth is still rotated or not in the ideal position? You'll have to go back anyway. So we take pictures and we take a pan ray just to check the uh, orientation of the teeth. And here we see 33 and 43 and 34 and 44. That need to be uh, improved, and 12 also is not quite well positioned. We check the alignment, and this is the, the appointment where we reposition the brackets if we need, and we grind the, the, the back turbos, the, the back ramps. And uh, we know we've done it. But sometimes we forget. You know, the back ramp is worn out, it doesn't show, and when you take the final picture, you see that the back ramp is still there. So the back ramps are grinded out. Uh, during this uh, repositioning appointment. Another important trick, if the patient comes to the appointment, we take the pictures, we take the x-ray, and then the patient goes uh, home, and then I will take some time to look at the pictures at uh, the beginning, halfway through the treatment, and uh, the x-ray, and I try to understand what have I achieved and what do I still need to do? Because, you know, in the beginning, it's night tire, arch wires, we make space. I mean, it's not very customized. But we reach a stage when we have to implement a customized treatment. And uh, I uh, draw up a list of what I have to do. And I have a colleague, and sometimes uh, she has to see my patients. So when she fills in the file, she knows exactly where I am. The assistant also knows exactly what I'm doing and what stage I have reached. This is uh, the form uh, for Colleen. First uh, appointment, then we bonded uh, the brackets. We inserted the 14 night eye, then the 018 night eye. Here, it was a longer appointment because we had to bond the missing teeth, and then we placed the arch wire at the bottom arch, and then we changed the uh, arch wire on the upper arch. And there is a short appointment, PTX, that's an internal appointment. And following this appointment, this appointment I wrote down what I still had to do. And what I have to do is written here on the clinical sheet, assessment May 2019. This is what remains to be done. Ligation, some finishing, derotation of uh, two teeth. And I'd rather do that by hand rather than reposition the bracket. And you know, everything is written, so I don't have to spend time reading the files when the patient comes. I know exactly what I have to do. And the finishing phase is very efficient. This is the uh, debond rebond day repositioning of uh, brackets. We see here the uh, night eye wire still active, uh, and she keeps it for another month to realign the teeth on which I reposition the bracket. I grind out the biomass, and I also did the uh, ligating operation. It's more efficient than just the stops on. 
Still 33 and 43, when the teeth are aligned and there is no more space, when the patient uses elastics, so some uh, spaces will open. So at, during this particular appointment, I insert the uh, stainless steel archways and I ligate the teeth to be on the safe side. And finally, there is the uh, finishing stage. When you use the uh, stiff arch wires, regardless, stainless steel TMA, you like it the interior sectors, you uh, remove the uh, back ramps and you start the sliding mechanics to close the spaces, the inter arch mechanics, and finally the aesthetic finishing. For Colleen, it wasn't too difficult. She had two uh, stainless steel arch wires. She uh, had also class two elastics. On that particular day, I started giving her elastics. She's in class one on the left hand side, still a little class two on the right hand side. She wears the elastics for two months and this is okay. We have achieved class one on both sides. I think there's micro finishing here, but I have an offset on 42 that I've written down. So there is a short point of finishing. Okay, this is uh, okay, and then I'll show you the end. I'd like to show you another patient, another example of a more complex case, what we can do during the same seal phase. We position the modules. This is a habit I learned from my father. I always close the anterior sector first. I place the uh, chain from caspid to caspid. I like eight in eight, and uh, I use the uh, lateral modules to avoid uh, arch contraction and uh, proclination. Retrochination, sorry. So we have scenarios where the patient has the chain, then comes back, and I change the modules on the side to close the posterior spaces. In the finishing stages, there is the elastics, single side or bilateral, and then we have some aesthetic finishing here. I, do, I don't want to debond and rebond everything. Where I have a rotation or an axis issue, okay, or when an, inc when an incisor is uh, not quite at the right height, I'd rather make a bend in my archway than uh, place an elastic. You know, I may have uh, written down 1121 to be checked. So that's what you do. You check whether you still are in agreement with the thing you wrote the previous appointment. Finally, retainer phase. This is Colleen again. We uh, use uh, bonded white retainer wires, both maxillary and mandible. The day we remove the brackets, uh, we uh, bond the uh, retainer wire. We'd already taken an impression, so everything was fine. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate.